Our bodies need protein to stay healthy and work the way it should. More than 10,000 types of protein are found in everything from your organs to your muscles and tissues to your bones, skin and hair. Let's dive into protein a little bit and why this macronutrient is essential for health. Stay to the end as I will tell you what sources I get my protein from, the best sources and also it helps promote the video as well. So here is a description of what protein is. The key points are protein is a macronutrient that we need for growth, repair and maintenance in the body, especially for bones and muscles. Our protein needs change across the life course. Protein is an energy source and provides four calories per gram. People who do some physical activity, like going for a run or an exercise class, are unlikely to need extra protein. However, for people exercising at a high level, having some protein soon after a training session can help muscles build. But what does protein do? Well, it's a critical part of the processes that fuel your energy and ca carry oxygen throughout your body in your blood. Also helps make antibodies that fight off infections and illnesses and helps keep cell healthy and create new ones. It is also required to build muscle, as I've already said. So let's look at protein as an energy. Protein fuel as an energy. Protein as a fuel, i.e. energy. You can get energy from protein Protein, but it's not the best choice. Protein has other jobs to fill that take priority over using it as an energy source, such as building muscles and producing protein-based substances that make muscles contract. It also takes your body longer to turn protein into energy compared to the quick boost you can get from carbohydrates. Before we move on, I want to mention amino acids. Protein breaks down into amino acids. These are often referred to as the building blocks of protein. They are compounds that play many critical roles in our bodies. You need amino acids for vital processes such as building proteins, hormones and neurotransmitters. Amino acids are concentrated in protein-rich foods such as meat, fish and soybeans. They're categorised as essential, conditionally essential or non-essential depending on several factors. Your body needs 20 different amino acids to grow and function properly. While all of these are important for your health, only nine are classified as as essential. Essential amino acids are those that cannot be made by our bodies, so we need to uh, get them through dietary intake. The best sources of essential amino acids are animal proteins such as meat, eggs and poultry. However, some plant foods such as soy products, endamame and tofu uh, contain all nine essential amino acids. This means that they are complete sources of protein. Several non-essential amino acids are classified as conditionally essential. These are essential only under specific circumstances such as during illness, pregnancy, infancy or trauma. Non-essential amino acids are those that can be made by the body. Now let's return to protein as energy and why it is not the best source of energy for the body. Amino acids are chemically like glucose except that they contain nitrogen. This means that even after protein is digested into amino acids, they must go through more steps to have the nitrogen removed. Once the nitrogen is gone, the amino acids are converted into glucose or fatty acids. Either way, they give you energy. Due to the extra steps, protein provides a slower but longer lasting source of energy than carbohydrates. Skeletal muscle is the major energy consumer during exercise and the oxidization of branch chain amino acids or BCAAs is increased several fold suggesting an increased requirement for fuel. So let's now talk about fighting off infections. So protein makes antibodies that fight off infections. Eat, and this is why eating lean protein at every meal is a good thing to do. No one food will magically fend off flu or any other illnesses but certain nutrients take the lead in helping protect your body from billions of bacteria, viruses and other germs 
and protein is one of them. One of the reasons is that antibodies that help fight disease are made of protein. Protein is vital to build and repair body tissue and to fight viral and bacterial infections. The immune system powerhouses such as antibodies and immune system cells rely on protein. Too little protein in the diet may lead to symptoms of weakness, fatigue, apathy and poor immunity. Our immune system is made up of proteins. High quality amino acids in our diet is essential in maintaining immune system cell structure. Whey protein is a well-known complete protein source that provides all essential amino acids our body needs. More about whey protein later. Another thing that protein does is to help build and repair. When proteins you eat are digested, they're broken down into individual amino acids so that cells in your body have access to whichever ones they need for the job at hand. About 75% of amino acids are used to synthesize new proteins. These proteins help build and repair tissues including muscles, bones and skin. They're also used to produce enzymes that digest food and activate your metabolism. Amino acids that aren't reassembled into proteins help make neurotransmitters and hormones. So you can see how essential having proteins in the body are. But how much do we need? Well, that depends. The dietary guidelines for Americans recommend the following daily amounts of protein for different age groups. What about my age group? I've said in previous videos, as we age our body changes drastically. From our 30s we start losing muscle mass which is called sarcopenia and therefore we need more protein to help maintain our health and muscle mass. As you advance from 40 then to 50 and onwards your body's needs change. If you want to keep your metabolism high to avoid frailty as you age aim for the recommended 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram or 2.2 pounds of body weight per day. Protein tissue accounts for 30% of the whole body protein turnover, but that rate declines to 20% or, or less by the age of 70. The result of this phenomenon is that older adults require more protein per kilogram body weight than do younger adults. The importance of dietary protein cannot be underestimated in the diets of older adults. Inadequate protein intake contributes to a decrease in reserve capacity, increased skin fragility and decreased immune function, poorer healing and longer recuperation from illness. I personally do take more protein than the recommended amount and have done for a long time. Whether it's just a coincidence or not, but I haven't had a serious illness really for about 10 or 11 years. So let's go on to what I personally take as my sources of protein. Let me know below in the comments whether you have something similar. So the humble egg is a great source of protein. One times 50 gram egg will provide six grams of protein. I sometimes have four in one meal but I rarely have less than a dozen over a whole week. The protein is in the egg white and yolk. Egg whites are usually associated with higher protein levels but get this, yolks contain more protein than the whites gram for gram. The average protein content of yolk is 16.4 grams per 100 grams compared to 10.8 grams in the egg white per 100 grams. So egg yolks are a great source of protein as well. In fact, egg protein is the standard against which all other proteins are compared. Compared to other high quality protein sources like meat, poultry and seafood, eggs are the least expensive. The red meat. The amount of protein varies in different meats, but on average, raw red meat contains about 20 to 25 grams of protein per 100 grams. Cooked red meat has got more, which comes out at 28 to 36 grams of protein per 100 grams of weight because the water content decreases and nutrients become more concentrated during cooking. And fish. The amount of protein depends on the fish but rest assured they all have a whopping load of protein. This can of tuna for instance has 25 grams of protein and it's about just over 100 grams in weight once it's drained and this can of sardines has about the same. Also 
100 gram of a salmon fillet has also has about 21 grams of protein so chicken the staple of protein intake for many is the chicken breast especially if you're into bodybuilding an average 100 gram chicken breast has a whopping 31 grams of protein wow finally let's talk about protein supplements i personally do use whey protein powders and this is the one i currently have okay it's a my protein brand i know it's back to front now i'm not getting paid for this i had to buy it out of my own money it's not a paid promotion or anything like that so it's the one I currently have. I don't always use my protein, but that's what I've got at the moment. So the reason why I use protein supplements is really more for convenience. However, whey protein especially has actually quite a lot of benefits. It's a complete protein, means it contains all the essential acid, uh, amino acids. It's easily digestible and absorbed by the gut into the bloodstream very easily compared to other types of protein. Whey protein is effective for the prevention of age-related muscle loss as well as for improved strength. However, whey protein does have its negative effects and that's for people, especially for people who uh, are intolerant to milk so that's it for now i hope you enjoyed this walk around protein the science of it is far more complicated than i could ever go through but you need protein especially especially as we get older you don't need to take protein supplements like i do but if you do in the recommended amounts then it's not too bad so hope you like that please like subscribe watch some of the other videos i've got on my channel i'd be much appreciated i will see you again soon